Hey, I'm gonna kick this one off with a question. Do you know what's gonna happen if you have a button wrapped inside a layout, wrapped inside a template for list view, and that all is wrapped inside another layout, and you tap the button, and you also have tap handlers on all the views going up the hierarchy. What's gonna happen? Which one is gonna go first? We're gonna compare this with Android, iOS, what the differences are, and what's the difference between using a button component versus another component like a label. We'll take a look at that and a couple of special properties that have recently been added to NativeScript to handle these kinds of cases. And that's coming up in this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. Pretty awesome, needed that. I'm running kind of low on interesting phrases that you leave me to tell you in the beginning of the videos. So leave a comment down below with something you want me to say. If this is your first time here, my name is Alex. I run nativescripting.com, which is a video course school where we take your native script skills up a notch. We have advanced native script training over there. And on this channel, I post native script tips, tricks, and tutorials, along with some of my end studio partners who contribute as well. So please subscribe to this channel to get more of those. And today we're looking at some strange behavior that I noticed when you're nesting tap handlers. So you have a wrapping layout, for example, and you assign a tap handler on that and then you have other tap handlers inside of that. This is very common use case for list especially and that's why I'm going to show you an example with a list where you have a list of items and in each row of the list you might have a tappable area which is the list item itself and then you might also have a button in that row which you want to register a separate tap. So there's some nuances in how this works on iOS and Android. It is a little bit different as I'm about to show you. And also there's been a couple of new properties added. These are just attributes that you can actually apply right to your UI views, right in your markup. Those are new, I'm gonna show you them as well. We'll do side-by-side -side comparisons with Android and iOS. I'm gonna show you the output that you get from tapping each one of those items. And you can make your own decisions based on your use case. I'm not gonna tell you you need to do it one way or another. I'm just gonna show you the output so that way you don't have to set up these experiments and then you can decide yourself what you need to do in your own case. All right, you ready? Let's do it. I wanna start off with this simple structure that I've built. It's a page with a grid layout in it. And then inside the grid layout is just a list view. And for every row in the list view, for every item that we're rendering, I'm gonna have another grid layout that's gonna wrap a label right now. And if you notice here, I've attached a tap handler to every single one of these UI structures. So on the label, I have a tap event that's bound to the on label tap handler. Then on the grid layout, on inner grid tap, Tap handler. I have one on the list view itself, on list view tap, and finally on the wrapping grid layout, I have on outer grid tap. Let's go to the code behind and we'll see all these defined right here as just simple functions. They're going to handle the event and print out that message in the name of the function. All right, so now I have this running in iOS and in Android and I'll pop up in the console right here. This is the console for iOS and I have the console for Android running here as well between these two tabs. Let's check out iOS. I'm going to tap on item three here and we have some messages logged to the console here. I'm going to open up the Android emulator and tap on item three and I have some printed here as well. So let's take a look here. On Android, we have on label tap. That makes sense. I tapped on the label, didn't I? Then it propagates up to the next level, which is on inner grid tap. Makes sense. That's the next one up. On list view tap, which wraps the grid components. And then finally on auto grid tap. So this is bubbling from the label that I tapped on all the way up through to the auto grid. On iOS, if you take a look at this, this is the opposite direction. So first we have on auto grid tab, then we have on list view tab, and on inner grid tab, and finally we have on label tab. So this is completely reverse order. Something to really be mindful of if you're going to be implementing multiple tab handlers on different parts of your list. Just for curiosity, I'm gonna add one more tab on the page itself, and I'm gonna call this one on page tab. Let's go ahead and create another one here. I'm gonna export, you know, I'm just gonna copy one of these. Export function on page tab, and I'm gonna print that message out, and let's see what happens. Because page is also a view, so it should also register a tab. Let's open up Android and iOS. I'm gonna tap on item three on iOS and on Android, and let's take a look at the console. All right, ignore these. These were just me testing. This is the output right now. We have the page, outer, list, inner, label. So we're going from the top all the way into the label on iOS. And on Android, we're continuing that same streak going from the label all the way to the page. So that makes sense. At least it's consistent within the platform itself. 
I'm gonna try something else. This label only takes up a certain width, right? So we're gonna make it, let's say, I'm gonna give this grid layout columns, and I'm gonna make it have two columns. Let's say 100 will be the first column, and then star will be the last column. Star takes up the rest of the space, of course. And the label, because I'm not defining a column, will be automatically put in the first column. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna, just so we can visually see the label, I'm gonna give it a background color here so we know where it ends. I'm gonna make that aqua. What I wanna do really is tap on something else other than the label. So I'm gonna tap on this part of each of the rows. So on iOS, I'm gonna do that. And on Android, I'm gonna do that. And let's check this out. So here is the Android result. Page tap, auto grid, list view tap, and then inner grid tap. And then iOS, inner grid tap, list view tap, auto grid, and page tap. So everything is flowing the exact same way, except the label tap is missing. Now, you might have found this article that Nick wrote. Nick is on the NativeScript team, so he knows a lot about NativeScript. He's building it. So if you check out this article, he wrote the NativeScript event bubbling, a short story of propagation tab. So he gives a little bit of a history of how the events bubble and they were unified in NativeScript 5 and 6. Now I'm running version 6.1 right now and on Android and iOS we are getting different behavior but I think what he means is the way the button behaves is a little bit different and there are some new properties that we can use to skip certain propagation events. And he gives some examples here that you can actually test out in the playground. So some of the gestures that you can pass through and skip taps on is this is pass through parent enabled. That's one of them. The other one is is user interaction enabled. So I'm going to start with is user interaction enabled. I'm going to copy that attribute and let's head over here to our markup and I'm going to add that attribute right here to this list view. So is user interaction enabled and I'm going to say false on that one. Just randomly pick that one and let's test this out. I'm I'm gonna tap on the label on both of these devices. All right, interesting. Okay, so on iOS, we get the on page tap and then on outer grid tap, it stops right there. There is no more drilling down past the list view or including the list view. So there is no label tab, even though I tapped on the label. On Android though, we have all the events. So for some reason, we're not seeing the same kind of treatment on iOS and Android with this is user interaction enabled flag. Okay, that's interesting. Let's try this other flag is passed through parent enabled. I'm going to copy that. Let's go ahead and paste it right here on this list view again, kind of in the middle of all our taps. So I'm going to set that to false. Let's go get to tapping. I'm going to tap on item one here. I tapped on the space outside of the label, by the way. So I'll do the same here on iOS and let's check this out. You know, I gotta wonder if this is even working on Android. I'm gonna tap on the label again here on item two. And yeah, it is working. So this was the last tap. It looks like it's doing all of them anyway, and it's ignoring that flag. I'm gonna rerun Android and see if that has any effect on it. So I'm gonna TNS run Android again. And we'll come back to that when it starts up because that flag should be doing something, right? Anyway, here we go on iOS, on page tap, on auto grid, list view, and then inner grid. So it's having no effect here. I'm gonna tap on item zero and we're getting all these events again on iOS. Just for quality's sake here, I'm gonna restart this on iOS again and let's try setting this to true. Maybe I'm not really understanding how this property is supposed to work. Is pass-through parent enabled? Sounds like if you disable that, it shouldn't allow pass-through, right? Well, let's check this out. Here we are on iOS. I'm gonna tap on item one and we get all the events. Back on Android, I'm gonna tap on item zero and we get all the events. So it's not working like I would expect, but perhaps this is because they're using a button here in the example and maybe this has to do with using a button. In fact, this does say something about buttons behaving differently than all the other components. So let's do that. Let's try this with a button instead of a label. I'm gonna convert this to a button. We're gonna use the same exact text and value. And for now, I'm gonna remove is pass through parent enabled just so that we have a baseline and see how this behaves normally compared to the label that we had before. Okay, so these are now all buttons. As you can see, let's check this out. We have a clean slate on our 
console here. I'm gonna click on item zero button here. Okay, look at that. That's very different already. I can see that on label tab, it says it should be on button tab, but you know what this means. Well, this is telling me that only one event is triggered when it's a button. Well, that's very interesting. Now let's tap on this Android one and we have on label tap, only one event. Wow, this is pretty cool. Interesting finding. Okay, what if I tap outside of the button on the row? I'll do that on iOS and Android. Look at that. That's also a little bit unexpected because now we have all of the events, including the button tap right there. And same thing on iOS. Now let's try these new properties. So it looks like we can apply this is user interaction enabled to a button. So let's do that. I'm going to apply that to this button right here. And I'm going to say false. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to tap on the button itself and look at that. We have all the events triggered, but not the button this time, which is interesting. It's the opposite effect when I tap on the button itself and on Android, it's the same. So that's good to know. Now, what if I tap outside of the button? I'm going to tap right here and right here. No button tap on Android and no button tap on iOS. So that one works pretty consistently. This user interaction enabled behavior. What about this is pass through parent enabled. Let's go ahead and add this to the parent of the button just like it is here in the article. So I'm going to add that right over here to this grid layout is pass through parent enabled and I'm going to set that to true. So here we have a similar setup. We have is user interaction enabled is false on the button and is pass through parent enabled on the wrapping stack layout. Let's check this out. Any guesses out there what's going to happen here? I'm going to tap on item zero button itself. In iOS, we have on page tap, on outer grid tap, and on list view tap. No inner grid tap. Okay. And then on Android, same thing. Let's set this to false. The pass through parent enabled. I'm going to set that to false. Let's do one more test. Item zero, item zero. And we get all of them, including the inner one and including the inner one. The fact that the, the very controls are on there and they allow you to tweak it to what you need is very useful because there are many scenarios when we need to be able to tap on different parts of the row of the list and get different results. For example, if we have a, a like button here, which is something the article mentions as well, if we have a Twitter feed and we have a like button, you don't want that to propagate. You just want it to be localized. So this is a way to do it. All right, so if you're searching around for this information, hopefully that was pretty helpful to you. Now let's take a look at some of your comments from this video that I created about Android status bar color and how to easily control it and change it on a page by page basis. If you haven't seen that video, check that out. Shipra says, Hello, Alexander, your videos have been a great help and changing the status bar from one page doesn't change back the previous page status bar color when used back to previous page in native script Angular. Well, that's some good information. Thanks for that tip. That might be some kind of caching issue or some kind of bug. I haven't actually looked into that, but I'll take a look at that shortly. Thanks for letting me know. Mohammed says, hi, Alex, how to change status bar color on splash screen? That's a very interesting question. Usually a splash screen, you don't even want to show the color of the status bar. Now the splash screen is something that pops up before your application screens pops up. So you shouldn't have to change anything there. I think it's just an image that's displayed. And if I'm not mistaken, it's displayed behind your status bar. I haven't tested this scenario out myself, how to change the color of the status bar in that scenario. But if anybody else knows the answer to this, please post a comment down below and share it with everybody else. All right, everybody, I got some news coming out soon and I'm going to be sharing it on this channel very shortly in the next couple of weeks or so. So if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions for me, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there and I will see you all in the next video. Happy native scripting.